Hi everyone, this is part two of the evolution of medical treatments. And that kind of leads us on to our next, you know, point of discussion because, you know, one of the drugs we talk, want to talk about is, is minoxidil. Right. And as you said, when minoxidil first came out, it, it was the topical version that was, uh, was the one that was uh, most available uh, for, for use for and approved for hair loss. And uh, you've got people using topical minoxidil. And then we started using the oral minoxidil. We started seeing patients who were on oral minoxidil for a variety of different uh, other reasons, uh, medical reasons, also, you know, re retaining or thickening their their hair. So there's been all this, this discussion about okay, which is better? Is oral minoxidil better or or topical minoxidil? And traditionally, I mean, a lot of people have been thinking, well, actually, with oral minoxidil, you actually get a higher systemic level uh, with regards to the amount of that drug within your system, and therefore, by virtue of that, it's going to be be more effective than the use of the, the topical. And there's been studies that have been shown that that is, that is the case, it's slightly more effective. But there was a recently a study in the, um, uh, in the JAMA journal from 2024, so relatively recent, and it's a double-blinded randomized control trial that l studied the effect of both oral minoxidil at five milligrams versus the use of 5% minoxidil, one mil of 5% minoxidil twice a day as per the protocol that you were involved with and it showed almost very similar results with with the two so there's no clear-cut winner there I mean this was a randomized double-blind uh, controlled trial and they were using uh, hair counts or using uh, AI to be able to calculate that and it's a, it's a really nicely designed so, study so there's a there's a couple of things that sort of fill in the gap between five percent tropical minoxidil and oral minoxidil yeah. <clears throat> one was that to this day, most doctors do not understand that minoxidil is not the active medicine. Mm. Minoxidil sulfate is the active medicine that has an effect upon hair. And for the, for the minoxidil to work, you have to have a specific, enough of a specific enzyme in the hair follicle, if you're using it topically, to create enough minoxidil sulfate to actually work. Yeah. Right? So that's the first thing that people don't understand. And it has become clear with further research that only about 50% of the population have enough native enzyme in the scalp to create enough minoxidil sulfate, which yeah. explains why it didn't suit everybody. Yes. Right? So, so, the, the, so the response was, oh, well, 5% minoxidil isn't working on, on Joe, so let's go to 7% or let's go to 8%, or let's go to 10%. So we have this bidding war. Again, not understanding the chemistry. There is a very, very good reason why you did the big pharma still only makes 5%. And that's because it's extremely difficult to stabilize in solution once it gets past 5%. So you don't know what you're putting on when, when you get this compound yes. because it doesn't exist. You have to compound it. It has to be made at the local pharmacy and you don't know what you're really putting on your head. Um, um, so, you know, 7%, 8%, it's like a bidding war, which I see as more marketing than no, science. Of course, yes. Uh, that's the problem. 8% sounds better than 5%. That's right. And then they added in ret retinoic acid yes. or tretinoin, which is used as an acne medicine, but it increases the scalp penetration mm -hmm. uh, of it. Now, where we went to oral, yeah, excluding that arm of, you know, the, that, that war, if you like, of dosing, which has never been proven, by the way, to have a, an improved effect mm. at 7 or 8% has not been proven to be superior to 5%. So then the next uh, thing is, well, what happens if we go to oral? Well, part of the theory of oral about getting a higher level there is that you don't just rely upon the scalp enzyme because you also have... The liver. An almost identical enzyme in the liver mm. that if you take it orally, you'll, you'll get it uh, made into minoxidil sulfate and then the bloodstream will carry it to the skull. Yeah. And, you know, most of us who have treated people in the last few years, most doctors who have treated people in the last few years have felt that the oral minoxidil patients did better. But, you know, your study that you've just quoted yeah. from this year suggests that's not necessarily true. But it does depend upon the patient population of because you don't know whether patient one, patient two, patient three, patient four have got the same level of enzyme activity. Yes. That can't be tested Correct. easily without biopsies. So it wasn't done. So the reality is the evidence is going to be a bit mixed about this. Yes. But it might be 
the part of the reason we have this instinct that our oral patients do better than our topical patients is because of compliance. In other words, they find it easier to, to take, take the tablet yeah. than they do to apply the lotion, particularly if they're being told to apply it twice a day, which just to me just raises the degree of difficulty without improving yes. the outcome. So it, there's probably a few different factors. So just to pause it there, because I think, you know, it's, it's really from an academic perspective, it's great to sit and listen to us talk about this. But, you know, from a user perspective, I think sort of try and, you know, unpack it a little bit and go, well, what does that mean for the individual? I think fundamentally what it means is that there is no absolute clear-cut right answer. There's no, this is the best option. Uh, there's only the best option for you. Correct. And part of the best option for you is what are you prepared to do regularly yeah. for a long time that causes the least amount of disruption that's to right. your lifestyle? Yes. And that's the critical thing yes. because, as I say to all of my patients that come in, the more compliant you are yeah. with the treatment program, the better results you're yes. going to get. And just going, right, what is the best treatment, what is the most approved, doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to be the most effective for you. Because we, as we've highlighted, there are certain treatments and certain, just, just from a geographical perspective, that are approved in some parts of the world that are not improve, uh, approved in other parts, doesn't mean that that's, you know, is the best outcome, that's going to get, get you to the best outcome. And you don't know when you're talking to your patient how they're going to respond to the medicine. Yes. This is going to be because of the differences in people's response rates. Mm -hmm. And it's not even just how they respond, but their chances of getting a side effect yeah. are unpredictable uh, when you start with the patient because yes. some people tolerate high doses, some people only can tolerate micro doses. Yeah. And you have no way... Uh, when you're starting someone who's never used this, uh, you know, treatment before, yeah. to know where they fit on that spectrum. Sure. And side effects, are, uh, you know, are apparent in every option, right? Yes. So with oral, there are certain there's side cost effects. benefit that, to everything. Correct. And there's the side effects with topical as well. Yes. You know, people can have a sensitivity to the to the the, ca the carrier uh, agent. Yes. So really, when we're looking specifically at, at minoxidil in this particular example, really important to make sure that you chat with your, your prescribing ph physician, find out which one is most appropriate for you, which one you will be most compliant with in the longer term. Yes, but unfortunately, you may know more about it now than he does at this point, or she does. <laughs> right. this so, <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a different question. So that's minoxidil, right? right? So let's come back to finasteride.